Hey, everybody. Happy Friday night. It's hard to believe we've gone through yet another week. And we're going to be talking about stepping into your power and living up to your potential. Because I think a lot of times we play small because we're scared. And it's easy. So tell me how in the past you've lived small. I follow the rules. Don't rock the boat, right? Don't rock the boat. Sit down, shut up, follow the rules, get the education you're supposed to get. Be quiet. Um, Follow, you know, don't question authority. Um, You know, get a job in corporate. Do this, do this, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. And what changed? Honestly, both my parents died. And what did that do? You were then in charge. I was in charge. And I also had this moment of, you know, life is too damn short. Mm. You know, That's a good one. My, when my mom died, she died the week before I started at Duke um, for my MBA program. And, um, you know, it was a really, really stressful time. And my dad was actually in the emergency room at the same time my dad my mom was in the ICU receiving last rites. It was a really crazy time. And my dad had to get 24 seven care for the rest of his life because his health had suddenly um, deteriorated because he had a fracture and nerve pain and all kinds of stuff happened in there. And my dad died eight weeks after I finished the program at Duke and um, I'm actually wearing my sweatshirt. Um, You know, my husband's parents had died even younger. My mom died at 67. My dad died at 71. But my my in-laws actually died at the age of 50 and 64, respectively. And, you know, so we're sitting there after my dad passes away, and he's the last person in that generation for our family to have been alive. Let me just say that that was really sobering for me Um, and really made me look at what I was doing, why I was doing it. Why am I sticking in this job that I don't love? I'm a square peg in a round hole. Um, I'm never going to get the promotion I want to get because I'm too valuable in the spot I'm in. And, you know, it's just that moment of, oh my gosh, something needs to change. And that's when I really started down this path. And I won't say it's been an easy one. I'll, I'll definitely say it's been some of the hardest stuff I've ever done. Um, you know, figuring out who is Haley. Um, what does Haley really want? Um, where am I going and why am I in this handbasket? And then everything happened with my oldest daughter, with her falling off of a horse in December of 2015, landing on her head, subsequent psychosis and, you know, all kinds of problems from the traumatic brain injury and hospitalizations galore. We're at like 19 and counting. And, you know, I've realized life is really too damn short to be living according to anybody else's rules of what they think I should be doing or anything else, you know? Um, Yeah. And stop playing small and stop trying to to make other people happy because I'm never going to be able to do it. Um, I have to live to make myself happy first. Right. And then then at that point, other people can be happy. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not talking about making myself happy in a way to, you know, abuse other people around me. No, or... you're not talking about narcissism. No. no, 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 I'm not. And, you know, it's just that, um, you know, we are in a way here, you know, stepping into you know, potential and really doing what I'm passionate about and helping people 
and focusing on things that make me happy. Because when I stopped making excuses or I stopped caring as much about what other people thought or what I thought they thought, you know, when I stopped giving as much of a flip, it was really interesting. People started to actually like me more than they did before. And it's hard to do that when your parents are alive because I think all children mm -hmm. want their parents' approval. Oh, yeah. And if your parents aren't approving of what you're doing, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. Well, and what's really interesting is that my parents would probably pretty much approve of everything I've done. You know, it's not exactly the most conventional path, mm -hmm. but I will say it's, you know, it's getting there. Um, and I will say, you know, there have been really tough times, you know, when we had the worst of the numbers of hospitalizations, my daughter would come out of the hospital and she'd be back in the hospital five or six days later or, you know, all of that. And, you know, that was definitely, I would say, some of the hardest part that we were going through and realizing, you know, I made a lot of really tough choices at the time. Um, but those are choices made out of strength. Yeah. And, and I did what I had to do, you, were. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to keep everybody alive. Um, Literally. And, oh, yeah. Literally. Um, you know, when you're dealing with homicidal and suicidal ideations with kid, a kid who's got a plan to both kill herself and the rest of us, you know, it really does start to change your perspective on what's important. Mm hmm That's very hard stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it makes you question your faith. It makes you question everything. Your relationships, the people around you, who's important, who's not important. Why are they important? Yeah, you get down to it very quickly. Mm -hmm. You do. And you start okay. to figure out who, who really cares, you know, because um, I, I definitely saw a lot of people who stepped up. Um, and literally saved my family's life and gave me and one of them was a young woman, a very young woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm and, impressed by that to this day, you know, and then, you know, there were definitely people who disappeared. Um, and, you know, I had both of them. I had people who blocked me on Facebook because I think I was triggering them. And, you know, the cool thing is that the more, I, you know, reached out for help and I asked for help, the more I was able to also step into my power. I quit caring what other people think, thought, quit trying to stand on my own two feet by myself, you know, quit trying to do it all alone because me, 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 me. And miracles happened. Got your faith back. Mm-hmm. Funny how that happens. Um, and, you know, God has a lot of grace for those who go through these hard times and sometimes that's the result and some, you know, I think mm -hmm. he's used to that. Um, feeling small. Mm -hmm. I can remember in my first career feeling small and making mm -hmm. a decision that I'm not going to be here anymore. Not one more day, not one more day. Am I going to do this? And just surrounded by miserable people, angry, mm -hmm. miserable people who felt very powerless. And so they became tyrants. Mm -hmm. and, and that was pretty common in that profession. Yeah. And, and I made a choice to get out and worked my way through it. It worked out really well. But like, like your story, my mother died six weeks before I graduated from law school. And... I mean, talk about hard days. I remember my last exam and I had already signed up for the bar. I don't even remember those last weeks of law school. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't remember anything about it. I just remember I've got to get through this. I've got to graduate. I've got to get to work. I got to get moving. I got to take the bar. I, it was just... Um, I think we don't step into our power out of, oh, gee, won't this be fun? I mean, I think it's done mm -hmm. usually as a crisis or um, 
a crossroads, like you said, a, a crisis of faith, mm -hmm. or, um, a big loss, or mm -hmm. um, so you know, I was newly divorced and I was alone, and then my mother died, and it, my family was very um, separate. Mm -hmm. My parents were going through a divorce when she died. It was just, it was very contentious and very, um, it was, it was very hard. And I think about this and I think you step into your power. I'm, I'm curious about the phrase. I don't, I don't quite understand the phrase, but we'll use it because I don't know what else to say. Because if you don't, you'll die. Mm -hmm. you know, just, you just have to go do what you got to do. Yeah, you, you either step into it and you fully show up or you shrivel up in a corner. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. And we've seen many people in the last two years of COVID who have just curled up in the corner. And uh, I'm hoping yeah. that they come out of it. I'm hoping. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen a lot of people really struggling with the mental health aspects, the anxiety, the depression, those types of things, definitely with COVID. And, you know, it's interesting because it's not always, you know, it didn't happen at the beginning. It took a long time. And even, you know, for some people I know, it happened once things had returned pretty much completely to normal in their lives. I wonder where that was. I don't know. I'd be interesting to, you know, understand the psychology behind it, because I think it's important to understand is, you know, they fought their way through, they won the big battle, they did the big things. And then, you know, once things were relatively normal, then they started really struggling. And I mean, we've seen that with the spike in suicides, um, you know, and self injurious behavior and self harm behavior in universities and schools, you know, kids you know, harming themselves or even committing suicide at large universities long after, you know, you would expect things to happen. It's like once classes have fully resumed, everybody's back in the dorms, everybody should be happy. And unfortunately, that's not been the case. And I mean, I think that there's definitely some, you know, some pendulum swinging going on, you know, where you think, oh, I'm doing great. I'm, you know, I'm superwoman, and then not so much. I would think it would be very hard for single people. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> stepping into your power is something that all of us are going to have to do sooner or later. To some extent or another, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that it is possible to keep playing it safe, living it small, you know, grow up, get the education, maybe not even get very much of the education, get the J-O-B and work, you know, whatever job, you know, until you are too old to work. Um, I mean, I see a lot of people who do that. And if you're happy with that, then great. But a lot of people are not happy with that. I think the crises find their way to your doorstep, though. Mm. I think that you're, you're going to be required to step up. One way or the other. Yeah. I think it's part of the human condition. Well, and then the question is, what do you do when, you, when you're when you faced with a challenge? Do you hide in the corner or do you, you know, stand up and fight? Well, I guess that's where faith comes in. I <laughs> think that's where a posse of good friends come in. Yeah. Uh, I think there are a lot of tools. Yeah. But it's an interesting topic and it looks different for everybody. Sure. But I think the crisis comes to your door sooner or later. It can. I mean, I think that we all have challenges in our lives. I mean, just to be honest, I mean, that's part of the human condition. You know, people get sick, you know, family members, whatever. We don't live in a vacuum and things happen. Life happens. The world happens. Um, you know, 
And then the real question is, you know, when when that shit happens, what are you going to do about it? A couple of things I'm thinking of that at my age, I don't have the same resilience that I did mm -hmm. 20 years ago. That I look back on some of the things that I've done in my life and I don't know that I could undertake them now if I had mm -hmm. to start from scratch. Like off to law school tomorrow. I mean, oh my word. I don't I don't think yeah. I could do it. I don't think right. I have the stamina for it. You know, the working three jobs things. Are you kidding me? I couldn't do that today. Mm -hmm. um, flying an airplane. If someone said, okay, let's go back to 1980 and I'm going to put you in that left seat for the first time. Mm -hmm. That idea just, that is overwhelming to me. Mm -hmm. the thought of taking on all that time, all that learning. Um, Different stages, right? Right, right. Different. And I think some of the growth as you age is death of a spouse, death of your parents. Um, I have a friend who two of four of her children have committed suicide and she's That's my really age. Difficult. Yeah. And nobody saw that coming. Nobody saw it coming. Mm -mm. And, and unfortunately it happens in bunches when it happens because once one person does it, then other people see it and it triggers a whole wave. Of things. Yeah. You see whole families makes you wonder about the genetics too. I don't know. Uh, you know, self-destruct gene. I don't know. I, I think that when one has boned up their courage, you know, when you've, when you've worked the muscle of courage, that when the shit hits the fan at whatever life stage, that hopefully you'll be able to tap into that mm -hmm. and use it to get you where you need to go. Yeah. And those are scary things to think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree a thousand percent. My and question, sorry for the expression on my face. The dog just farted under my desk. <laughs> my question is, what is it that we do to improve the odds? What do we do to be stronger? What do we do to be ready, to be prepared? I think that's where the true self-care, resilience, does develop, developing resiliency skills is important. Developing what have you done? What have you done to develop resiliency? You know, and I'm saying that because I'm not sure I can answer it. Um, you know, so therapy. Um, I have learned behaviors. Um, positive behaviors um, to manage stress. So rather than Very good point. eating everything in sight, um, I exercise or I'll go out and I'll walk the dog or I'll meditate or I'll take a hot bath. So developing skills, coping skills is really important. Um, you know, and turning your energy for good. Uh, developing hobbies is important. I have this little Facebook group that nobody's ever heard of called Women's Entrepreneur Network. One of my crazy hobby. 75,000 members? No, nah, something like that. Yeah. Didn't spend a lot of time on that. No, not at all. But, you know, you talk about hobbies, right? I think women are better at that than men. I mean, I think that a lot of men play golf. And when they retire, they play golf. Um it's not such a bad thing, you know, you're out, you're in nature, you're doing your thing. I mean, I think it's important to have a set of hobbies that you enjoy and, you know, preferably a circle of friends that you can spend time with and friends that are supportive, like truly supportive, getting the right friends, getting friends that really understand, like, especially if you're a business owner, getting other friends that are business owners as friends um, is important. You know, you bring up a very good point. And I have a group of business owner friends and we get mm -hmm. together every every month for lunch. 
and every couple of months for dinner and a book. Mm -hmm. And I learned from a professional friend of mine who's older mm -hmm. that she keeps the club very closed. She said, the people mm -hmm. are like me or they're not around me. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And she said, look, mm -hmm. she said, I've made millions and millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I've worked a hundred hours a week, much of my, much of my life. And she said, and I thought this was interesting. She said, people hate me for what I have. Mm -hmm. Women are much more likely to hate her for that than men are. Men will admire her. They sure don't want to be married to her, but they admire her. And it's interesting to me how she keeps herself from being disappointed by surrounding herself with wealthy, educated, professional women who understand the sacrifices she's made, understand what she's had to do to get where she is, as opposed to the pettiness or not understanding what it takes to mm -hmm. get there. And uh, it, it's, it's interesting. And I've, I've heard many people mm -hmm. say very mean things about her. And I think you hate her for what she has. You don't Not hate her for her personality. You hate her because she's got the strength to go out and do all this. And she sacrificed. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Uh and now, you know, she's, she's got the most toys, that's for sure. And perhaps that's all people can see. And for the rest of us, we can see some of the things that aren't there, like the healthy relationships that absolutely cannot be there if you choose work over your family for 30 and 40 years. Absolutely. You know, if you had, with your sick daughter, said, I'm sorry, I'm going to hire a case manager. I'll get back to you in three months. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, that's that. And that's how this is. Mm -hmm. I can remember, I can remember her daughter saying, mom, I'm singing the lead in the school play. I really need you to come. And she said, oh, I'm sorry. I just hate going to things like that. I could be earning money and it's such a waste of time. And I thought, oh, okay then. And you know, that's your own values, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and that's really true. she lived her life as she has chosen to and preferred to, right? Not that it was the same decision the rest of us would maybe or and, other people would make. And she's willing to take the consequences, she yeah. has been willing to take every last bit of it. So um, you know what? And that's an important thing, too. That's an important part of stepping into who you are is being willing to take the consequences of mm -hmm. being that person. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody's going to like you. I know that not everybody likes me, you know, and that's OK. I'm just it has to be, you know, when you when you're a grown up, if they don't fuck them, if they don't like you, I mean, seriously, fuck them. And I know that we're on live TV. I'll say it again. Fuck them. Because you can't please everybody. You got to do the best you can do. You treat people with dignity and courtesy and respect. And you extend an arm of friendship whenever possible and whenever feasible. But if they don't like you for what you got or the color of your hair or the car you drive, fuck them. And all of you out there, remember that. You do the best you can. And that's got to be your strength. You do the best you can. You what answer you God at the end of the night and fuck them if they don't get it. Yeah, absolutely. That's where it is. I love that, by the way. I really do. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful night. It is almost 10 p.m. My daughter is almost home for the spring break for the week. Um. I am reliably informed she has got an empty cooler and all of her empty Tupperware containers from her apartment in Cincinnati coming home um, so that mom can hopefully fill them with good things this week. Well, that's a lovely thing to say. So if she's lucky, mom will, will cook something this week. Just kidding. We're making lasagna. 
and we're making chicken pot pie and we're making chicken and dumplings and we're making chicken tortilla soup and we're making French onion soup. So if y'all want to come up, come over for dinner, apparently we're feeding a small army. It's a 500 mile drive, but I'll be over. Thanks. I got an extra bed. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. We all I hope soon. you all have a great night. Take care. Oh, yeah. And I've got to bake four chocolate cakes this week because my kids insist on large quantities of chocolate cakes to take back to school. It's crazy. It's a game of how many cakes can they eat. One mother make. Like, seriously. We'll see you guys. See y'all.